Magenta Canada and CNM Seeds present the Wheat School on RealAgriculture.com. So it's been an amazing spring. We've had a tremendously warm 10-day stretch in March. Unheard of, everything started to grow, the wheat broke dormancy, and March 30th we had an extremely cold night and a whole lot of frost damage and from there right through till the 27th of April it froze almost every night. It was just amazing how cold it stayed. And we were really worried on the 26th and 27th of April we got two very hard frosts almost to the point of freeze damage. Tremendous injury in all the fruit tree crops and we thought that the wheat crop was going to be in huge trouble. Uh, the science would say four hours at minus four and this wheat here was at growth stage 31. First node, four hours at minus four, we should have seen tremendous injury. It's amazing, we're here now, it's the 8th of May, and so we're just about 10 days later. I was here just after the frost. This wheat crop looked like it was probably done. In this particular field, we really wondered if it would come back or not. We've split a bunch of heads today. Uh, they're nice and crisp, that lettuce green color, they look fine. There's, there's still some significant foliar injury. You can see foliar injury here quite a bit, but the wheat crop has really grown past it. If you look down in the canopy, you can start to see that there's a whole lot of dead leaves there. But with the 10 days of good weather, suddenly this wheat has snapped back out of it. It's looking dark green, it's caught the nitrogen. It was manganese deficient before, they sprayed it with manganese and it's picked that manganese up and life is looking very good for this wheat crop. So we've gone from a crop where you might have thought that it was a replant situation to, to now this field looks like it could well have 80 or 90 bushel yield potential. Quite amazing that it could withstand those minus six, minus seven, minus eight temperatures and not have more freeze damage than what we're actually seeing. Yeah, so we really are surprised by how little frost damage or freeze damage we're seeing across the province or certainly throughout southwestern Ontario from those two cold nights in April. What's intriguing is that we saw a lot more frost injury with the March 30th frost than we saw with the April 26th, 27th frost. And yet the low temperatures were about the same and we had two cold nights in April, one cold night in March. And you kind of say, well, why would that be? Well, if you back up the clock, you look at the March 30th frost, we had 10 days of warm weather, the wheat was growing, it was growing fast, it was lush, it was succulent, and suddenly we got one cold night that really hammered the daylights out of it. You come through a very, very cold April, lots of low temperatures, and then we get the same kind of frosty nights, two nights in a row, and instead of getting a lot of injury, we've seen almost no injury or, or much less injury than we expected. And we think that is the wheat crop's ability to do something that we call acclimate to the, the temperatures that it's exposed to. So with those repeated cold nights, the cells actually increase the salt concentration and it makes them more frost tolerant. And given the fact that the wheat had grown and how cold it got on the 26th and 27th, if we hadn't had those colder temperatures previous, we might have had no wheat crop. But across the province, the amount of frost or freeze injury on field crops, so wheat, corn, uh, alfalfa, all those different crops, it's pretty minimal given the temperatures we had and what we thought would actually happen. 